to football. Uh, <laughs> Bears, Niners, this weekend, this is the uh, Rami Makloffs versus the uh, Jay Johnsons. We're all excited for this game in Chicago. All eyes, of course, on Trey Lance. Game one as QB1. I know he started two games last year, but he was not QB1. Uh, here was Lance talking about uh, his expectations for this weekend. Um, I'm excited. I mean, uh, real similar to, I guess, the weeks that I, I did start uh, last year uh, from, from a preparation standpoint. Uh, but it's, it's great to have those guys in the room. Great to have Jimmy in the room to help, uh, you know, bounce ideas off of. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Uh, George Kittle is officially questionable. He did not practice today. He's questionable. Uh, here was uh, Kyle Shanahan talking about his tight end. I don't know yet. I'm really hoping that it'll be all right. Um, I'm trying to think positively on it. You know, he didn't end up getting to go yesterday, and, you know, he's not in here today yet. And I'm actually, I'm sure he's probably coming in right now. Treatment starts at 7. Um, but they'll hit him hard. And they'll do it all morning, and hopefully he'll be able to get out there and do some red zone work today. Now, Kittle, for what it's worth, said he's feeling better today. So I guess there's the outside shot that he plays on Sunday. Uh, the first question I have is – you know, how will Shanahan utilize Lance? Like what what will they what will they go into this game thinking as far as Lance and, and what they're going to allow him to do in his first start officially as QB one? And, and I find this all fascinating because you've got Lance again, first time with the keys truly in his hands, going against Matt Eberflus, who did a fantastic job in Indianapolis as defensive coordinator. He is now in Chicago. Surprised me, by the way, that they they picked him as the head coach. I thought they would go offensive you and me both. with Justin Fields. But uh, here was Eberflus uh, this week talking about what he expects from Trey Lance. Yeah, it's you, you're projecting a little bit. You have to project of, of how they're going to use the young man and, and where, where they're going to use him in their offense. You know, we certainly have a, an idea of what this offense looks like. Um, but, uh, you know, how they're going to use him, no one really knows. So you got to really, you know, use your rules and – you know, have your calls and, and make sure you're sound in what you're doing. Rami, do you expect them to play it a little safe with Lance? I honestly, and this is this is uh, probably the most dangerous thing about if there's anything dangerous about this Bears team on Sunday. The most we're trying to figure out. You know, well, you're framing it as the Bears don't know what to expect from Trey Lance, and nobody does. But the thing about the Bears is, who knows what to expect from the Bears because. Not only is this a new coaching staff and an overhauled roster and not a good roster, by the way, I'm just going to put that out there <laughs> from the jump. It's not a good roster that the Bears have. But you pointed out Eberflus and what he was able to do in Indianapolis. The guy the guy draws up good defenses. He schemes good defense. And on both sides of the ball, you really don't know who or what this Bears team is or what they're going to try and do. You know what I mean? Because you haven't. They didn't show you a lot in the preseason, and not not a lot of teams will show you a lot in the preseason. Right. You don't know what this Bears defense is going to throw at Trey Lance. That's I, th I think this whole thing early on is going to very much be a feeling out process of the Bears going, all right, what are we dealing with with this first-time starter and Trey Lance and Trey Lance and the 49ers offense going, all right, what are we dealing with with the new defense for the Chicago Bears? Yeah, I expect Shanahan to play it a little safe. Because I do think Eberflus is going to throw a bunch at the rookie with all intents and purposes. I know he's not really a rookie, but you get it. Uh, and I, I would expect Shanahan to run a lot of boot action. I, I would expect some misdirection in the backfield. Of course, Shanahan is going to lean heavily on the run like he always does. Occasional shot down, feel with Lance, but I, I think that's what you'll see. I think you'll see mostly a conservative game plan. I wouldn't be surprised if early on in this game, Shanahan tries to take a shot, right? Like first series, everybody thinks this is going to be safe, and, and they do some kind of misdirection, take a shot down the field kind of play. Would not be surprised by that. But I think mostly when we look at how they handle Lance – on Sunday, it's going to be the safe route. It's going to let's run the football, let's run some boot action, let's get Lance moving with his legs, and let's not try to ask for too much from him. Because I think when you, you know, when you look at the other side, Rami, of this game, when you look at the Niners defense against the Chicago offense, here's what my concern would be if I were you on Sunday. That offensive line, that pass protection against this Niners defensive line, specifically Braxton Jones versus Nick Bosa. It's bad. The Bears offensive line is is it's a bad situation. And and that's as I sit here in my sweetness t-shirt, 
in front of you, Nick. It's, that's <laughs> that that Nick Bosa matchup on the on on that side of the line, and and they'll move them all over the line to take advantage of all the weaknesses that the Bears have on the offensive line. That's that's the scariest thing about this 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 game to me on Sunday. As a bear, I just I, I kind of just hope Ju- Justin Fields survives. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like, a major question. Yeah, he's now. I will say this. You talked about Trey Lance taking some deep shots. I think the Bears will also attempt to take some deep shots, partly out of necessity because they'll have to if they're going to try and keep up with the 49ers. But found this stat today at ESPN.com: the Lions, Texans, and Bears are the only defenses last year that allowed more yards per deep pass attempt than the 49ers last season. Huh. I think you're going to see Justin Fields try and take some shots and 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 score some points quick to try and stay in the game with the 49ers and might have some success doing it. Now, also this, the Niners play a ton of zone coverage, and Justin Fields, seven of his 10 interceptions last year came against zone coverage. So you should be able to, especially if you're getting that pressure up front and running that zone coverage, you should be able to, to force some mistakes from Justin Fields, the way you're talking about Eberflus and the Bears defense trying to force some mistakes out of Trey Lance. Yeah, if I'm, I think each side kind of has the concern, right? Look, the offensive tackle situation for San Francisco is fine. It's going to be okay. It's, it's going to be okay. Trent Williams is a beast. You should be good. But still, the the interior of the offensive line, if that starts to show cracks like we've seen at times during this preseason, during training camp, that could be an issue. You get Lance running outside of the pocket, trying to make a play. That's when you make mistakes. Same thing for Chicago. If, if if Fields is running for his life on Sunday, that's when you make the mistakes. When you talk about deep shots, part of this game, of course, Rami is Jimmy Ward. He's going to be out for San Francisco. So they're looking at safety here. My guess would be maybe George Odom is the guy. Maybe. They still haven't told us, have they? I don't think they will. When you when you look at when you look at this game plan, I, I find it fascinating. Like you just mentioned, the the Niners gave up some big plays last year in the passing game. Now they're thin at safety. So I agree with you. I think Chicago, especially with Mooney, who can burn, I think they take some shots against that defense. These are both defenses that give up the deep ball. Or were defenses, we can't say this year. Things change over the course of an offseason. But last year, these were both defenses that that were vulnerable to the deep ball. I think and I'm not saying we're going to see a shootout, but I think I think it'll be it'll be a fun game to watch in that you're going to see two quarterbacks that are going to take their shots downfield. Whether or not they execute them is remains to be seen, but yeah. I think going in, both of these offenses plan, plan to take some deep shots. And you need time. If you're going to take deep shots, you need time. And if your offensive line is falling apart in front of you, you're not going to have time and you got to scrap that plan and move forward with something else. So It'll be interesting to see if the original plan works. If it doesn't, how do you adjust? The other big part of this, I brought up Everflus. This is his first time as a head coach. That's a big deal, right? His first time as the guy going against Kyle Shanahan, and many people believe that Shanahan is one of the better coaches in the NFL, so that is another aspect of this game and a reason why I like San Francisco, as I said last segment, to win this game, and I think they win by more than seven I like the coaching matchup here. I think Shanahan will take advantage of this. And I think Eberflus, uh, you know, he might have some issues adjusting on the fly first time out. You mentioned the, we just made our picks and you mentioned the, the, the spread of seven. Yes. Um, I forgot I had this in my, in my notes. I'm just looking through my notes as we're talking about this game. The Bears were 0 and 5 against the spread as home underdogs last year and 3 and 10. Against the spread as underdogs overall. Can I? You want to change? <laughs> I, change uh, I don't know. <laughs> nope. I'm not feeling so great about you it after stand. reading that. Here's something else. Man, seven is a big number. Uh, Chicago, their last eight openers. You know what the record is? Uh, oh, and eight, I'm going to guess. No, they're one okay. and seven. One and seven. All right. One and seven. I knew it was bad. And their last eight openers. I knew it was bad. Uh, so, you know, when you look at this, Kittle, how, how do you adjust if Kittle's not out there? Does that change the game plan? How much does it change the game plan? Of course, it's going to have an impact if he's not playing. I think they win this game with or without Kittle. I, I agree. I agree. Right. But it just it's interesting to see, you know, how Lance will adapt to that. Now, I will say the good thing, the silver lining of not having Kittle if they don't have him on Sunday is the fact that they have not had him at practice this week. So they have already, I would imagine, they've already begun 
trying to shape their offense with the idea of, hey, Kittle might not be here on Sunday. And from what we heard, Kittle and Lance weren't, and not to say that it's it, it won't be a productive connection somewhere down the line, but from what we heard, Kittle and Lance weren't necessarily clicking throughout training camp. The guys he, he was more going to was Ayuk and, and Debo Samuel in practices and the little bit of preseason that we saw him in. I hate to put it this way, but if you were going to be without somebody on Sunday in terms of weapons available to Trey Lance, George Kittle might be the guy. You know what I mean? If you said you, you're going to you're going to not be what you're going to not have one of these three guys on Sunday, George Kittle, for everything that he's done, just looking at the the, sh- the little bit that we've seen from Trey Lance, that might be the guy who you go, all right, I guess I guess we go without him on Sunday. 916-339-1140 is the text line. The phone line is 1-800-920-1140. You can check us out. Again, YouTube.com, Sacktown Sports 1140. Uh, click that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe. Follow us all year long. We are fully into football season, getting you ready for week one. We want your thoughts on the Niners. We want your thoughts on the Raiders. If you have other NFL thoughts, 